in the intense world of medical emergencies. One patient, three times stab wounds. There's nothing more extreme than a code red. So this is a two-car RTC. That's correct. It means there's an immediate threat to life. Got one male still trapped in the vehicle. In the West Midlands, a highly specialist team are on call 24-7, ready to race to these major traumas. Meteor four minutes. By road and air. Zero three wheel lifted from Cosford. Responding to the most severe 999 calls. Open up the Lucas device over there for me. Day and night. All right, well done. From car crashes. Yeah, just need to check. To stabbings. Are going to put some oxygen on your pals? Here, where time is critical, lives will be saved. Ah. On roadsides, in back gardens, and inside homes. It's okay, coming off the chest. These emergency doctors and paramedics use cutting edge trauma techniques and surgery normally only seen in operating theatres to save people from almost certain death. Oh, sorry, mate. I oh, know, mate. I oh, know. We're going to sort you out. Filmed over two months with the critical care team. Ready, set, slide. We captured every vital second as these specialist crews work to save lives. On roll, ready, steady, roll. Tonight, a desperate 999 call leads to multiple casualties in a major car crash. There's people trapped in the car. And she's screaming. Where's your worst pain? In your chest? A woman with asthma suffers a cardiac arrest Let's get some adrenaline. We've got 40 seconds until the next rhythm check. A scooter accident inflicts devastating injuries. Oh, quite a lot of pain there. Yeah, we're, we're on it, we're on it. Get your pain sorted out, mate. And police, fire brigade and ambulance race to the scene of a stabbing. Any details as to whether they're conscious breathing or not, over. Heavy blood loss. Done. That's done. Yeah. So I've got all the amps and ketamine here. At the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham, critical care paramedic Ian Locke and Dr Richard Brown have just dropped off a patient and are restocking their fast response vehicle with drugs and equipment for the rest of the shift. We're going to try and get all the kit together in good order. Um, so if we if we are required that um, that we know where. The essential kit is ready to go, so um, organised chaos is how I'd like to describe it. <coughs> Hello? I'm on a car crash, please, something like that. OK, are you injured? No, really bad. OK, all right, listen, what's the address? Where are you? I don't know. Ask somebody to help you. Oh, God, I'm I... in the middle of the road. OK, are you out of the car? No, the car's in the tree. The car's in the tree? Yeah, but my friends are trapped. How many people are in the car? Three. We found you, my love. OK, stay on the road. I think I broke my Four ambulances, multiple police units, and two fire engines have been called to the site of the crash. Mike Dutton 98 on channel, leaving QE now. Critical care backup is also urgently required, so Richard and Ian need to get there fast. Got one male, two quick males, still trapped in the vehicle. One possibly got an impaled injury by, on a tree pickup. Hi, Dale Sano. That was all copied. Our ETA is approximately three to four minutes over. With multiple casualties, this is a major incident, requiring all the emergency services to work together to save lives. Hi, Dale Sano. See you, over. Roger, thank you. All you. All right, Tim. How are you doing? You all right? On arrival, they are briefed by West Midlands Ambulance Tactical Incident Commander Tim, who is coordinating the whole emergency effort. 
So we've got one patient that's been ejected yeah. on this ambulance here. We've got three more in there. Yeah. One has just been dragged out, a male patient. He's got some concerns over his airway. Okay. We've got two more patients in the back. They're lying on top of each other at the moment. So we're just trying to get a plan to get them out. OK. The four friends were returning from a restaurant when the car lost control before hitting trees and landing on its roof. One female passenger in her 20s was ejected from the vehicle and has just been moved onto the ambulance. If one of you can have a quick look, because they're pretty much packaged and they can get going. OK, yeah, right. can have a quick eye on this one? Yeah. yeah. Um, if you could also look at the, the chap that they dragged out, that's yeah. potentially got airway. Yeah. There you go, sure. right? How you doing? You OK? Hello. 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 Yeah. What have we got? Very quickly. The patient on the ambulance is the woman who called 999. She is complaining of severe back pain. She is also bleeding from a head injury. Jack, very quickly, patient one is the ejected female. Is a GCS 14 stroke 15, um, good bilateral radials, moving all four limbs. We'll get the crew to ring you when they're ready to go with an atlas for Worcester. OK. With her spine immobilised, Ian and Richard decide that she is stable enough to be taken to hospital. Right, that's patient one. An ambulance crew prepared to take her, leaving the critical care team to assess the rest of the crash victims. That was going to Worcester. You want to just have a look at the one that's been dragged out? Yep, if you don't mind. Where are they? Just uh, point us. It's this person with a green yep. shirt on the floor here. Yeah. Have a look over here, OK. What have we got? The driver, a man in his 40s, is in a much more serious condition. Is he speaking to you at all? Yeah. Just about, just about, yeah, yeah. He was pulled from his seat by the ambulance crew and is now on a stretcher and only semi-conscious. This chap dragged out. He was not able to be laid flat at all. OK. He started to come yeah. back. Okay. He rolled to his side uh, quite a lot of most coming back of his airway. OK, so I'll just get around that way. We'll just scoop him on his side, if that's where he'll be. Can you open your eyes, my friend? Whoa. Where's your worst pain? In your chest. Are you, are you happy on your side or lying on your back? As Ian and Richard try to assess his injuries, screams are heard from the wreckage of the car, where the other two passengers are still trapped. It's going one way, isn't it? Ambulance services, the patient breathing. The critical care team and Midlands Air Ambulance cover an area of around 6,000 square miles. Series 3 lifted with ETA of four minutes the largest operating area of any specialist trauma unit in the country. Just coming into the overhead lane. In a 12-hour shift, they will respond to around eight life-threatening emergencies. The most frequent call-outs are to serious traumas from road traffic collisions and cardiac arrests. That is a Lucas chest compression device. It's on the specialist platforms such as uh, the critical care car. Uh, I think it's going to be rolled out eventually onto the air ambulances as well. At the start of his shift, critical care paramedic Pete Edwards is testing a mechanical resuscitation device not carried on ambulances, but included as standard on the critical care team's cars. It does continuous chest compressions, and it's a machine, it's automated, so you, you don't get operator fatigue. It frees up a pair of hands on scene if you're short of resources. And also, if we're going to transport the patient to hospital in cardiac arrest, it makes the journey a lot safer, because you don't have to have somebody standing up in a moving vehicle doing CPR. It's all in there. Ambulance services, the patient breathing? No. No breathing at all? No. Patient male or female? Female. How old is she? How old is she, ma'am? 40, 50. Do you have access to an automatic defibrillator? No. No, OK. I'm going to tell you how to do CPR. Get her flat on the back on the floor. She's not breathing in her face. She's going to the OK, well, the quicker we start CPR, the more chance she's got then, darling. Keep pushing hard and fast until anything changes. So the rate we go in is one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Keep going. 
Alright, that's all received, thank you. Today, Pete is paired with fellow critical care paramedic Mike Andrews. As well as the critical care team, ambulance crews and a specialist resuscitation unit have all been called to the scene. It's a patient who's in their 50s, who's in cardiac arrest. That's not been confirmed yet because we don't have any resources on scene, um, although they, they should beat us according to uh, dispatch. With cardiac arrests, time is everything. Every minute that goes by without someone attempting a resuscitation, the chances of survival drop by 10%. Hello, my name is Mike. I'm one of the paramedics. OK. Hello, guys. You're either. How do you? On arrival, ambulance crew members are working hard to save support worker Vanessa. OK, was she asystolic when you got here? Yeah. OK, so first crew, she was asystolic. Asystolic throughout. We've been trying to get access because we need to give adrenaline. She has been asystolic without a heartbeat since they got there. Are your family? Yeah, yeah is it your mum? Your auntie. What's happened? Is she an asthmatic? OK. Have you found her in cardiac arrest? Earlier, Vanessa, who was alone at the time, called a relative to tell them she was having an asthma attack. When she failed to answer her phone after they called back, her nephew went round and found the 50-year-old collapsed. No one knows how long ago her heart stopped beating. We've got an IGL in airway and Tardy's a little bit low, so we just have to go on the ventilation. OK. Um, and we're just getting the reversible courses now. I'll tell you what, I'll come round the top end. Do you, want to, do you want to run it and I'll go to the okay. top end? All right. Mike and Pete will now take over advanced life support. Because Vanessa doesn't have a heartbeat, it can't be shot back into a workable rhythm with a defibrillator. So they will use chest compressions and drugs to try to get it started again. OK, should we, should we pause for a quick rhythm check so we can all reset and we get our timings right? So, OK, let's check for pulse in two places, please. Uh, nothing okay. here, mate. OK, so that looks like asystole to me. Back on the chest then for two minutes and let's see where we're going. After each cycle of chest compressions, Pete checks to see if there is the slightest spark of life. Hello, how you doing? Hello there, all right, how's it going? Anything you want us to be doing? We've got this lady, uh, known asthmatic, okay. uh, she's found a relative. Three members of the West Midlands care team, specialists in accidents and resuscitation, arrive on scene. So, just done a pulse check, and we're uh, one minute. 20 to the next pulse but she's in asystole, so okay. we're going to start trying to redress some reversible causes. OK. All right, so have we got any access? OK, let's get some adrenaline and the glucose set up if we can. You got in glucose, yeah? You're doing the adrenaline. OK. Adrenaline and glucose are stimulants that could trigger activity in Vanessa's heart. Everybody, just a second. 15 seconds from next pulse check. We're going to take a little break in CPR and get the Lucas device on. So, eight seconds. If everybody just stands back while the care team get the Lucas device deployed. So, three, two, one. OK. Quick pulse check, rhythm check. It's still asystole. After 18 minutes of manual CPR, the Lucas machine will now take over chest compressions. So, we've got continuous CPR going now. The entire team are doing everything they can, but with Vanessa still showing no signs of life, Pete knows they don't have much time left to save her. Can we just do a pulse check? What have we got there? OK, there's no pulse. OK. Yeah. Are you happy on your side or lying on your back? In Redditch, Ian and Richard are at the scene of a serious road traffic accident. Can you lift this leg for me? The driver is on the ground, semi-conscious. The full extent of his injuries is still unknown. Uh, at the minute he's talking, he's able to speak. He said he's got pain in his chest and he wants to go onto his back. He's quite cold, but we'll just get him on his back and get him off. Have a look from there. There you go. Just roll onto your back, my friend. 
junkie back. There you go. With the help of the fire brigade, the man is rolled over. Guys, are you okay just to give hands and we'll lift him straight on the stretcher? Yeah. He's bleeding from a wound to his head. Uh, you stay there, bro. We're going to get you on the ambulance, OK? Well done. One female passenger in her 20s has already left the scene in an ambulance. The remaining two passengers are still trapped in the back of the car. How are you doing? OK. Given the high number of casualties, extra resources have arrived. The first question that was ejected we visited a quick once over the ambulance. She's obviously trauma tool negative, so we said what's the fire. Ian and Richard will focus on the driver, leaving the West Midlands care team to take over the trapped passengers when they are freed. This chap, they've also got a house today. We're concerned about his airway, but he's talking. So they're doing another assessment now that he's uh, on the trolley. And there's two people still in there that are trying to get out. So we've not had any eyes on them, but the heart team are in there trying to uh, get them out. The hazardous area response team are specialists trained to extricate and treat patients in dangerous situations. The fire brigade and ambulance crew are working against the clock to free the two remaining female passengers. One woman is bleeding from her head. An hour and eight minutes after the 999 call, the last two patients are brought out of the wreckage and are on their way to receiving emergency treatment. On board one of the ambulances, Ian has had the chance to examine the driver and his condition is deteriorating. He needs to get to hospital fast. If you get to the point we want to intervene further, we just give a shout, pull over, yeah. jump around the back, and then we'll go from there. Is that all right? Okay. okay. Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Yeah. Ian and Richard will travel with him to provide continual care throughout the 20 minute journey. So it's a male, we think in his late 40s. Injuries wise, he looks like he's definitely got max the facial fractures and possible head injury as well. He's got a black eye on the right with a very swollen, deformed right cheek. Um, his GCS uh, was 13 and he's a bit agitated. So query head injury. He's been cannulated and he's had some ketamine sedation, a total of 40 milligrams so far. Arriving at hospital, Ian and Richard deliver their critically ill patient to the waiting emergency doctors. So it's quite a different job that from what you're probably used to dealing with. So significant ITC Sorry. with quite a few patients. After a complex multi-service job, everyone can take stock and learn valuable lessons for the future. It's very important, so particularly that job where there's lots of people there working um, and uh, lots of things going on. It's quite useful to, at the end, go through you know, what happened at the job, um, what we did, what could have been done better. And it's quite useful for the crews for their learning, because most of the you know, regular ambulance crews don't go to jobs like that very often at all, probably once a year, if that. It's Wednesday night, and Dr Scott Beatty and critical care paramedic Will Meadows are at the beginning of a 12-hour night shift. Just ahead, turn left. Dr. Scott is a consultant in emergency medicine at Salford Royal Emergency Department in Greater Manchester and does a shift a week for the critical care team. I can't think of a more textbook definition of a team that, in terms that everyone comes from a different background, but we're much better as a, as a unit because we bring all our different skills and it all just comes together. It's a very dynamic team. Will has recently completed his advanced critical care training, and this is his first night as part of the all-night trauma response unit. This is my first shift, um, first sort of solo shift with, with the doc. So Scott's got his hands full tonight. Au <laughs> contraire. <laughs> <laughs> Service, please. Hello. 
Can you assist us to uh, kitchen line for stabbing? A stabbing, okay. And uh, what's the address to come to? Near the top of uh, kitchen line, bleeding heavily to the chest. Man is barely talking. He's just found him. Stab to the chest was that? Yeah, stab to the chest. Attack on scene? Uh, not known. He's a passerby that's come across him. The police have requested an ambulance to attend the scene of a reported stabbing. With a man's life in danger, critical care backup is urgently needed. Nine no, no. oh, eight. Uh, stabbing in the chest. Yeah. Any details as to whether they're conscious breathing or not? Over. Last year, there were almost 4,000 knife crimes in the West Midlands. It's an ever-increasing part of the critical care team's workload. So reports of a stabbing of a male stabbed in the chest with uh, heavy blood loss, but we're not sure of any other details at this stage. But certainly heavy blood loss suggests that something fairly significant has been damaged. Even the smallest of little wounds could go in a very long way and hit some fairly vital organs. So, quite complex, quite worrying. If the blade has cut an artery or punctured a major organ, the man could bleed out and die in minutes. Scotton will know that the sooner they get there, the better chance they have of saving his life. Airway is good, so we're Airway's good with the yeah, mate. We're doing hypoxia. Over, yeah. 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 Hypovolemia, we've got fluids. That's glucose running. Okay, so we're doing the BM as a metabolic disorder. In Edgbaston, critical care paramedics Mike Andrews and Pete Edwards are leading the team fighting to save 50-year-old asthmatic Vanessa, who was found collapsed with no heartbeat. We've got 40 seconds until the next rhythm check. But after 20 minutes of fighting to get her heart started, there is still no sign of life. Several of her family members are in the next room. Will this move under her legs? Let's raise her legs, see if that helps anything. OK, so if you push something under there, or that little table, whatever's easiest. By raising Vanessa's legs, Pete hopes gravity will send blood closer to her heart and may prompt it to restart. That's it, love. OK, that'll do. Let's just keep her legs down. I know it's created a bit less room, but we've raised her legs a little bit. All right. No one is sure how long before Vanessa was found, her heart stopped beating, and time is running out for them to save her. Can I just stop us there? We're just due. Next pulse check. OK, that's pulse check there. No adrenaline on this cycle. Do the next one. So there's no pulse of the so carotid. Like and then tidal is 1.3 despite 20 minutes of good ALS. Um, well, can I, somebody have to have a chat with family regarding that? Or do, is that all right? And I'll conti continue with timings. Yep. Is that all right? OK, yeah, let's continue. Because they attend only the most serious cases, critical care paramedics see death day in, day out. Is anybody in a position to find out the time of the call? Their hardest decision is always when to stop trying to save a life. So, what we're, what we're just thinking is, we've got, a very di we've got an unknown downtime. Um, we have had some CPR on crew arrive, but we don't know when she's actually arrested, and blue on arrival, apparently. So the things that are going against us, she's not been in a shockable rhythm at any point. Um, we've done 20 minutes of ALF. <laughs> OK. Do we, need, do we need to reconsult family? Or are you happy with that, Bobby? Is there, has anybody got any objections to, to stopping? OK, is everybody happy to stop him? Recognition of life extinct. By my time, that's 16, 13. crew member informs Vanessa's relatives that despite their best efforts, she has died. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, on lift, ready, step, lift. 
You took hit. Yep. Yeah, but I feel like you're right now. It can be emotionally draining, I think, but at the same time, you have to sort of detach yourself from the emotional side of it if you can. There will always be jobs where you can't detach yourself. There's a, there'll always be those jobs that always stick in, stick in our minds that we all keep locked away somewhere, the jobs that, you know, you can't really forget. But I think you've got to be quite thick-skinned. There are more than 30,000 out-of-hospital cardiac arrests in the UK every year. The overall survival rate is just one in 10. In Wolverhampton, Dr. Scott Beatty and critical care paramedic Will Meadows are en route to a stabbing. A passerby called police after he found a man with a serious chest wound lying by the side of the road. Thank you. Several details of I don't know if you see you, are we? They haven't told us one, have they? With violent incidents like stabbings where multiple units are scrambled, police usually arrive first and secure the scene while ambulance and critical care crews head to a meeting point nearby. Just to confirm with you, you will be the first ambulance resource in attendance. You've had nothing come back from police. Mike Delta 98, sorry, just to clarify, are we heading to an RVP or can we go straight to scene over? Oh, no, I just get in the time for police. I'll take a track to scene, please join the vicinity. 98, yeah, perfect. We have approximately four minutes left to run over. For the critical care team, reducing the number of deaths from stabbings is a top priority. Nothing seen, not clear. Their skills and experience with treating major bleeding and shock are vital when it comes to saving lives. My phone's actually thank you. Oh, please, sir, are you in my contact with her? No, I'm going to have a place, please, sir. They are just in the area, so if you can just uh, see if you can locate and call back her. No problem. The ambulance crew has just arrived on scene, but with no sign of the incident or police, they radio back to control for further instructions. It's now been 14 minutes since the emergency call was made. It's been five, five, the aid police. It looks like it may be a malicious call. They're calling the caller back and trying to make contact with them. At the moment, the impression from the police and the first crews on scene is that, yeah, it's a malicious call. Uh, unfortunately, it's not uncommon. Um, we get a fair few. And it's just obviously a significant waste of resources. You have reached your destination. You have reached your destination. Right, I'm going to send it down. Um, I think if there's anything, we'd have to find it on our... Yeah, 9 eight, understood. Oh. With no sign of any stabbing victim, the police have decided that it's been a hoax call and a wasted journey for everyone. Obviously, no contact with medics. Uh, going to stand the crew and myself down. Uh, police standing down. Last year, West Midlands Ambulance Service received over a thousand malicious calls. In the time they've been dealing with this prank, Ambulance Control have taken 50 real emergency calls. I guess you don't feel quite so bad. It's when you get you launch the helicopters, you're up in the sky and everything, and that's just a huge amount of money wasted for someone's entertainment. Breathing. There's been an accident on the Litchfield Road by the traffic light. Uh, a BMW has just knocked a man off his bike. Is the patient breathing and conscious? He's got pains in his chest. But right, is he awake? Yes, he's awake. Don't move him. Don't move him. 
he's got chest pain and I think all down the left hand side. All down the left hand side really hurts. What's bike or a motorbike? He's on a small motorbike. He's going slightly blue. Sweetheart, his lips are going blue. Would you say that he's struggling desperately for breath? Desperately for breath, yes. Okay, got a crew on the way to you. When a car hits a motorbike, even at low speed, the injuries inflicted can be life-changing. An ambulance has been called and critical care paramedic Steve Mitchell, known as Mitch, has also been scrambled. We're just off to Aston. It's about 10 minutes away uh, to a car versus motorcyclist. I believe the patient's conscious, got a chest injury. And that's as far as we know, really. There's a crew on the way and uh, they'll be there before us. If the man is struggling to breathe, he may have an obstructed airway. Mitch carries advanced airway equipment, including ventilators, so he can start treatment straight away and get him to hospital safely. Hey, you up? You're all right. How's it going? Ten minutes later, Mitch arrives at the scene and is met by fire brigade and ambulance crew. No worries. Uh, I'm here. What's your name, sir? Ian Allen. Ian. What we'll do is we'll get you in the warm, dust you off a bit. Yeah, OK. All right. 47-year-old railway worker Ian was on his way back from work on his scooter when a car collided with him at a crossroads, catapulting him onto the road. And is it your left shoulder, right shoulder? All the left. All, all the left, left. OK. He is breathing on his own, but in a lot of pain. It looks like he's probably dislocated or broken by the sounds of things. So I just so I don't pull anything. There's a high chance Ian has injured his spine in the collision, so the ambulance crew have immobilised his head and neck to try and protect him from further damage. On your count, Chief. After three, one, two, three, lift. OK, stay as you are, and then slide the trolley in. Mind your toes, gently. OK, keep going. I'll, I'll get the winch off. Worried that the slightest jolt could leave him with permanent spinal damage, Mitch needs to use the winch to pull the stretcher up the ramp. OK, stop there. OK, one foot, two, half, six inches. That's a go. Hold on. OK, slack taken up there. OK, just makes it a bit smoother for you. Once on the ambulance, Mitch needs to do a full examination to try and find the extent of Ian's injuries. Yeah, I'm in a bit of pain. Okay. Can get some gas in there, mate. Um, some water. Courtney, you like to get some morphine drawn up and some paracetamol. He's in a lot of pain. Oh, yeah, we've got a bit of pain, yeah. Okay, here's a little bit of water. Just wet the whistle. Out of ten, how bad would you say the pain is in your arm? It's pretty bad. Ten being the worst ever. It, it just does, it just feels like there's something wrong there. Just yeah, yeah, it will be. Okay. It's my chest. Your chest. Shoulder. Yeah. All round there. It's really pain. It feels it. Che it's chest up here as well? Further down here. Forward, yeah, further. There, 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 yeah, there, there, there. OK, right, OK. Ian is in so much pain, it's clear that he has sustained some broken bones and potentially damaged internal organs. Keep your arm low for me, Ian, OK, so we can pop a little needle in there. Mitch's first priority is to reduce his pain so he can get him to hospital fast. Get your pain sorted out, mate. Ambulance service, patient breathing? Uh, he is, but it's not very good. She conscious, the patient? No. Not responding? No. How old's the patient? I'm not really sure, he's 1934. So he's 85 years old and he's not responding to at the moment? To confirm, no, no, he's very, very pale in colour, okay. very pale. Is he taking regular breaths at the moment? Is his chest rising and falling evenly? No. Right, I hope it's all been arranged for him, OK? We are trying to get there as quick as we can on blue lights and sirens, OK? The call is from a local care home. It is classed as a cardiac arrest, a code red emergency. An ambulance is en route, but critical care paramedics Alistair McNeil and Mike Andrews have also been scrambled. What looks like a nursing home or sheltered accommodation for an... Cardiac arrest, Charlie one call, 
We're responding as we are one of the closest resources to the case. We have another crew that are en route as well, but no one on scene yet, as far as we know. In the UK, around seven and a half million people are living with heart disease. As we get older, the heart and blood vessels stiffen, meaning the elderly are at greater risk of sudden cardiac arrest. This is the time of the morning when people are getting up and they're moving around and carers are making their first sort of visits of the day. So this sort of case is not uncommon at this time of day. A lot of the time, it's, they're hypoglycemic patients, so they're diabetics or even non-diabetics who, whose blood sugar has gone low and they've been found in an unconscious state. Still a couple of minutes away from the care home, Alistair and Mike know they need to get there fast if they are going to intervene and save the man's life. What we're going to do is we're going to get a needle in you, give you some pain relief through there, and that'll help the breathing, all right? Clench your fist a few times. That's it. In Aston, Mitch is treating 47-year-old Ian, who was knocked off his scooter and has suffered serious chest injuries. So it's that's a 95 on air. Uh, it's sort of coming up quite quickly there as well. Four litres there? Oh. Yeah. I'd, I'd go up a bit. Yeah, he's having a bit of difficulty breathing, I think, and like what's happened. Sharp scratch then. Okay. Ian needs an urgent scan of his chest and lungs, and is in so much pain it's affecting his breathing. Oh, yeah, sorry, Chief. I'm in a lot more pain than I was out there. Yeah, he kicks in once your own uh, painkillers wear out your system. If you want to chuck us that morphine, I think. Uh, any allergies at all, then? Uh, not really, no. So this will make you feel a bit fuzzy, OK? Oh. Out of 10, how bad would you say the pain is there? I'd say it's pretty bad. I'd say it's uh, about 8 out of 10. About 8 out of 10. And you look like a burly chap that can take a bit of pain. Ian's blood is showing low oxygen levels. He may have damaged his ribs and lungs, but until he can get on top of his pain, Mitch can't be sure of the extent of his injuries. Can we just pop your head forward slightly? Not too much, not too much. Rest your head back. Rest your head back. OK. How's that? Can you feel that starting to kick in a little bit there? Yeah, I'm a bit broken once again. Yeah. to get round. Yeah. Nice slow breaths, if you can. How's the pain doing there, uh, Ian? It's subsiding, but it's still there. Yeah, OK, we'll get you. Yeah. Have you put the morphine? Yeah, that's gone. Yeah, it's gone It's working now. Yeah. 14, 20, it's not even good. Finally, the combination of paracetamol and morphine start to take effect. Stuttering his respiration now. I'll probably give him a little keep going until you've done the 20, yeah. I think. With Ian still struggling with his breathing, Mitch decides to keep him on oxygen for the journey to hospital. I will probably end up going QE, I think, because he's got a chest injury. Yeah. How old are you, sorry, Ian? 47. 47, OK. Maybe just put a, a 250 bag of fluid on there, yeah. just run the rest of it through, just give him a lock a bit of a keep open or something like that. If his blood pressure drops, the intravenous fluids will help to keep him stable. Are we uh, clearing okay. fracture? Left. Uh, ribs, uh, ribs, uh, ribs and shoulder injury. Left. Also. Left, yeah. Police arrive to get details of the accident, and Mitch calls the trauma desk to update them. Have you impacted you? Well, I'm going to the side of the side, anyways. So, where did you impact the car? 6-2, go ahead. So, crew are going to convey to the QE. Are uh, you ready for details? In the, in the right I've got it first. Yes, fire ahead, Mitch. So, mail on uh, a, a, a small motorcycle moped. Um, he's got a left shoulder lateral clavicle pain with um, left sort of lower rib injury, query um, fractured ribs, equal air entry, but it is affecting his respiration and uh, in light of his rib injury, I feel that it's uh, suitable for the QE. They'll probably be about uh, 15 minutes from now. With Ian now in a stable condition, Mitch is happy to leave him in the care of the ambulance crew for the journey to hospital. The crew. 
In Quinton, Alistair and Mike have been called to a care home where an 85-year-old patient has been found in an unresponsive state, bleeding from the nose. Good morning. Hello again. Hello again. You're right. They are met by the ambulance crew, members of the care home staff, and happily are now conscious Ken. So which nostrils have both come out? Ken and his wife Maureen have lived in their apartment in the care home for eight years. He collapsed this morning getting out of bed. How is he normally compared to, to this? Well, we he... don't come into him for care. So you don't know him too well? No. Well, we know him, but we don't no, give no. care to him. Okay. I know I'm always pulling the legs out. Is that what you do? Yeah. Oh, I'll keep some on their toes, I would imagine. So when you sat up, you just felt a little bit dizzy. You know. Yeah. And when I got round, yeah, over oh, there. It happened yesterday as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, can I take a spot of blood out your finger? You can have, give it, yeah, you can have it from under here. I'll give about two points while I've been eating it. Yeah. <laughs> you lost a lot from your nose, have you? You've had no chest pain or anything, have you? Look at it all. The crew take a sample to test Ken's blood to see if low blood sugar could have caused him to pass out. OK. OK. He was getting out of bed and the blood not going around my body quick enough. Did he leap out of bed, did you? No. What was that? Is that normal? Uh, 6.9. 6.9? Yeah, 6.8 and 6.9. Are you happy with his ECG and everything? Yeah, I'll do it 12. The electrocardiogram test hasn't shown up any abnormalities in Ken's heart rhythm. I can't manage it, God. No, I know you can't. If, you'd have, if, you, if I hadn't given you this word, you'd have been flat on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't lift you up. Up on yesterday as well. No, of course it not but Alistair is concerned that this is the second time he has fainted in 24 hours. The nosebleed could be a sign of high blood pressure or heart disease that needs investigation in hospital. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any news to me to go to us. But Ken is not convinced. Mm -hmm. We'll do our checks on you, Ken, and we'll take it from there, mate. Ken has a history of fainting when he gets up in the night, but has never had a proper diagnosis. Did he go to hospital yesterday? Did he go to hospital last night, did you, Ken? No, no, no. no. Uh, you had it happen yesterday, you've had it happen today. It happened yesterday morning, then he cleared up, not all right. The Ken is... What was his BP, James? You've got to go in. Uh, what you were You were out for the, uh, what, a count. Got a good run. Just no. Mike wants the crew to run another ECG scan to see if there are any signs of deterioration or unusual activity. That's a nice scar you've got on your chest, isn't it? Mm, what's that from? What, what, 20 years ago. Oh, 20 years ago. 25 years, more than that. Really? Yeah. It's indestructible then, maybe. A veteran of open heart surgery to unblock clogged arteries, Ken is made of stern stuff. But in the end, he listens to medical advice and agrees to go with the ambulance crew to hospital. OK, well, yeah. okay take well, care. Welcome to come in. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Nice one. Yeah. We'll leave you to it. Bye -bye. We'll see you later on. Nice to see you. And Mike and Alistair are free for their next emergency call. Yeah.